بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو دا کلاس ود دس نیو لیکچر دا ایٹینتھ لیکچر ان دا سیریز آف دا پبلک پالیسی انالیسز بائی ناؤ آئی ہوپ دیٹ یو گاٹ اے ہینگ آف آل دا گرافکس اینڈ آل دا کمپیوٹیشنز وچ وی سرٹنلی وی ڈوئنگ ایون مور ان دا کمنگ لیکچرس بٹ ہوپ فلی وٹ ویو ڈن ٹل ناؤ اینڈ وٹ آئی ٹرائی ٹو انسٹل ان ٹو یو از دیٹ try drawing it yourself uh, as I try to do over here uh, not the most uh, straightforward or not the most clearest but what at, at least I try to do is try to teach you how to go about this kind of stuff so hopefully by now uh, you would have got the basics and ABCs of what we've been doing over there in terms of graphics so uh, we'll be doing that a lot more in especially in the coming lectures uh, then uh, when we get into the practical problems their practical implementation will certainly be uh, looking at it uh, at it graphically and even if uh, i would see if i've uh, uh, i would go through the lectures uh, and if i believe i would go through the lectures again and if i believe that there is something missing in it uh, some graphical analysis some detail which uh, you might encounter when uh, you are doing public policy uh, analysis or uh, policy questions something there is basic that is missing and that needs to be taught then i'll definitely go through it again so that you guys are completely up to date with uh, the basis of uh, the theoretical basis at least of uh, the policy analysis questions So hopefully uh, you are enjoying the lectures, uh, you are enjoying all the talk, uh, I certainly do and I would uh, even enjoy it more if I can realize that my students who are listening to me uh, and uh, going through all this kind of stuff uh, are uh, getting what I am teaching uh, you guys so which will be probably will be reflected on exams and uh, discussions and assignments but anyway uh, I really do hope that uh, I've been helpful in this regard time will tell anyway uh, let's go to the lecture first of all the previous lecture the re debate regarding the greenhouse gas emissions and how the lack of ac action on part of the private sector invited government's involvement uh, we've been studying the rationale for government intervention we'll be studying it uh, even more uh, we went through the Pareto optimality and the, those sort of criterions and uh, discussed that was one rationale for government intervention so uh, this was the real world example as uh, I've been saying again and again uh, my lectures would be complemented by real world examples both from within Pakistan and from outside Pakistan uh, just to make you understand uh, how you how one goes about in uh, implementing a practical public policy jo main aapko misale de raha hu jo isme articles hai aur jo ke mazid aage wale lectures mein bhi misale aayengi khab khas taur pe jab hum bilkul end ke lectures pe aa jayenge usme tik tak main aap logo ko misale dunga maqsad ye hai ki agar aapko yaad ho humne kaha tha ki comparisons wali baat mein ke ٹیل ایس سکسیس اسٹوری اور فیلیئر ون کے اس میں سے ہمیں یہ سبق حاصل کرنا ہے کہ اگر کوئی پالیسی کامیاب ہوئی تو کس طرح ہوئی اور اگر کوئی ناکام ہوئی تو کیوں ہوئی وجوہات کیا ہے مقصد یہ ہے کہ سیکھنا سبق سیکھنا جو کہ یہاں پہ ہمارے لوگ بہت اچھے نہیں ہیں اس کام میں سبق سیکھنے میں ورنہ اگر سبق سیکھا ہوتا تاریخ سے تو اتنے مسئلے نہ ہوتے بٹ آئی گیس ایوری بڈی ایز اٹس اون وے آف گوئنگ about things uh, ours is certainly not the most efficient uh, not the nor the most productive but it goes on so as they say the show goes on uh, we went through the concepts uh, sorry the then i when i talked about the greenhouse gases uh, uh, and the global warming phenomenon uh, we discussed that how the private sector failed to take an initiative on their part and one of the reasons that private sector Uh, failed to take initiative on their part was because uh, it involved pr producers uh, and uh, producers are pretty reluctant uh, to be taxed on consumption uh, on production and reducing their production because uh, at least theoretically 
I cannot say practically every time, but at least theoretically we expect the producer to produce that much amount which he considers feasible or profit maximizing amount. But if you ask him to reduce the production from that point, then he'll be pretty reluctant because it's, it's going to eat into his profits and then you're taxing him too. So uh, there was uh, this uh, bit of resistance from the private sector and there still is a lot of resistance in uh, some of the cases uh, where uh, we know that there is a harm coming our way, coming the people's way, but yet the lobbies or the industries are that strong or so strong that they uh, successfully prevent uh, any action taken in this regard. What would be a prominent example of this? Uh, take the example of tobacco industry. Uh, everybody knows that uh, smoking can uh, be very harmful or injurious to health. Um, science has proven that, uh, lab, uh, technical analysis and uh, experiments over the years or uh, biological uh, tests over the years, they, they have proven that, that there is a causal link between them. Uh, both through they have been proven both through qualitative and quantitative methods, but yet it still goes on. The tobacco industry is pretty strong, not just in Pakistan, but even in uh, industrialized nations. It's um, in fact much stronger over there and uh, it has a good presence over here. So the uh, private sector has its own motives and they don't necessarily come to an agreement about these kind of things, about public goods. So you see one of the problems with their uh, with their production, let's say, let's take the example of production and industry. One of the problem is that they exert an externality on upon people, and that externality is pollution. Uh, when production takes place, uh, it pollutes the environment, it pollutes the air. But they don't necessarily clean it up. No, they don't. Uh, and I remember in one of the uh, starting lectures, I gave you the example of uh, I shared with you what happened in the Dera Ismail Khan where uh, one of the factories, they dumped uh, hazardous chemical waste in the river where uh, people were, uh, quite a few uh, men were uh, having, uh, just uh, playing around, having fun, but somehow they ended up swallowing that water and died. So, but who is responsible? I mean, that's the private sector. They should have thought about it, but they didn't. So by default, the government comes in. Over here too, in case of the greenhouse gas emissions, by default the government came in because the private sector wouldn't take any initiative in this regard. Despite the evidence that the carbon emissions, that they are increasing and they are causing some kind of uh, change in weather patterns, but uh, private sector wouldn't buy it and they wouldn't reach an agreement. So the government had to st uh, step in all over the world and they reached agreements like the Kyoto Protocol which were aimed at reducing the carbon emissions. So let's see what happens. Uh, so this is one example of where the government's uh, involvement proved a, a bit useful. In fact, a lot useful, not just a bit useful. And then in that lecture, we went through concepts of producer surplus, economic profit, and various kinds of cost, uh, total cost, average cost, marginal cost. Uh, this is a whole concept uh, that is related to production, these costs and what is the relationship between these costs and revenue, total revenue, average revenue, marginal revenue. Uh, but that's part of economics. Uh, we don't need to go through it over here. You just needed to know the basics of it. And especially why uh, when we draw a curve, uh, this is asked again and again about uh, uh, drawing curves that uh, why is it U-shaped, why is not other way around. It can be other way around. Uh, these kind of curves, but in the graphical world that we uh, that I exhibited and that you're going to probably find in most of the economic textbooks, uh, it is just like that. For those who have read economics, it's uh, a pretty familiar site, the U-shaped curves, but for those who haven't, it's not a familiar site. So there was, I thought, the need to explain why a curve is U-shaped, uh, the average cost and marginal cost curves and where they cut each other, what's the relation between them. Uh, which was a mathematical relation. Uh, so uh, j just to make, uh, just to make uh, understand, just to make you have a basis for discussion. Uh, there are quite a few assumptions that uh, if relaxed that would entail that these cost curves are not exactly the U-shaped curves, but uh, 
that's not part of this course uh, if you happen to take if you happen to take courses in economics you would uh, probably encounter this thing but not for the moment uh, our job is pretty much with the basics then a simple graphical uh, presentation of producer surplus we'll be going through this again uh, i just gave you a simple very simple example and uh, showed you how uh, the producer surplus is uh, represented uh, in case of the cost curves, uh, marginal cost curves, average cost curves, and what that implies. But uh, as far as uh, the, uh, the uh, pointing out the areas, rectangular areas, uh, triangular areas is concerned, I didn't do that. I left it. I told you that we'll be doing it again, and we'll be doing it in this lecture. And uh, then we talked about the social surplus equilibrium and why it is considered favorable in terms of both the consumer and producer surplus. Um, remember that shape that we drew, the demand curve, the supply curve, and there is a triangle on both sides. So if you move beneath the equilibrium price, then move above the equilibrium price, uh, you have these triangles that would contract or uh, expand depending upon uh, where you are moving and which curve is it intersecting one on one side is the producer surplus the other side is consumer surplus so if you if the there is price movement uh, there would be a loss of surplus uh, in that regard either on the side of consumer and producer so both from the consumer and producers point of view and from a social optimum point of view what would be best is that uh, the the prices state the equilibrium as well as the quantity because that's where producers and consumers would probably find themselves uh, most happy. Uh, easier said than done. Uh, this is just a graphical analysis. Equilibrium in real world, you never know what equilibrium is. And it's difficult to find out. It's difficult to reach an equilibrium. Basically what it is, equilibrium ki jab hum baat karte hain, equilibrium jitne bhi wasail hai, उसमें से जो सबसे बेहतरीन नतीजा निकल सकता है वो इक्विलिब्रियम है आ, कोई इक्विलिब्रियम ऐसा नहीं है कि बस एक सतह पे हमने एक कीमत रखी हुई है या फिर प्रोडक्शन रखी हुई है और कह रहे हैं कि जी ये इक्विलिब्रियम है इससे नीचे ऊपर इक्विलिब्रियम नहीं हो सकता जब आ, रियल लाइफ की बात करते हैं जब हकीकी जिंदगी की बात करते हैं तो उसमें इक्विलिब्रियम का कोई नंबर नहीं है कोई इस तरह का एस्टिमेट नहीं है इक्विलिब्रियम को डिफाइन किस तरह किया जाता है इक्विलिब्रियम वो आ, कीमत होती है या वो स्टेट होती है आ, वो सूरत हाल होती है जिसमें किसी भी इकोनॉमी के जितने भी रिसोर्स या जितने भी वसाइल हैं उनका बेहतरीन इस्तेमाल जो है आ सकता है आ, किया जा सकता है और उसके नतीजे में जो कीमत आती है या आ, उसके नतीजे में जितनी प्रोडक्शन आती है आ, सब रसद और तलब वाला आ, बात डिमांड एंड सप्लाई वाली तो वो इक्वलीब्रियम होता है Anyway, uh, let us just uh, move ahead with the lecture. This one. The depiction of uh, producer uh, surplus and profits in a graph. Last time we only covered the graph, the shape and the nature of cost curves, but we didn't cover uh, all that stuff related to how do you uh, mark out those areas, which could happen in uh, policy analysis they can ask you to how that thing is graphically represented uh, normally it doesn't but as I said it's always better to know the basics so uh, we'll go ahead with drawing those uh, graphs again and I'll try to illustrate uh, how uh, this thing is done so uh, let's move ahead with this thing and see what happens so here you go uh, this is our usual y-axis and this is usual x-axis oh here it comes it comes slowly 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 uh, which is fine uh, at least it's doing our job and uh, by now I'm sure you would have uh, got used to the notion that uh, over here it's not the best of drawings but it's so all right for our understanding uh, then you have these uh, cost curves that need to be drawn the last time the way we drew it pause so let's draw these uh, curves 
and let's see what uh, happens uh, what is the result end result that we get first of all we draw the u-shaped average cost curve then we draw similarly u-shaped marginal cost curve so this is the average cost curve AC this is the marginal cost curve MC this is the point uh, remember we talked about this mathematical relationship that uh, marginal cost curve curves the average cost cuts the average cost curve at its lowest point and there is no other point where the marginal cost ca curve can cu cut it and this is the lowest point we extend it over here this is the price now this is suppose the original price and price somehow something it rises over here to P1 or P2 suppose we extend this line over here like this then the P2 price line it touches it just if you extend it extend it to the horizontal axis normally as we do this a uh, this area this whole represents uh, this is how we draw uh, in case there we are trying to depict the profits uh, let us name this point this one as a this one as B and this one as equilibrium point E. So and this one as A B C. Now the area below these curves uh, where uh, this production is taking place over here that is the area where uh, all the costs of production are depicted uh, what would be this area in this regard uh, that would be all this area covered under the cost curves let's name it as O let's name it as Q and let's name this point as Q2 so over here the total cost if I have to talk about the cost the total cost of production it is depicted by the area P C Q2 O this rectangular area this is uh, depicted by P C Q2 O suppose we are at uh, price P1 which is above the uh, uh, this price where the marginal cost curve it cuts cuts the average cost curve now what's its significance why are we showing it over here what's the need of it we'll uh, just see uh, for the moment just consider this price p1 uh, what is happening if her, if we are at this uh, price the area the since this all this is cost area and the price is above the cost area so naturally whatever is above the cost that would be profit for a firm so suppose at price if we are at price P1 the profit is given by the area if you ever get to do this in your life uh, this is fun <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> but it's fun uh, try that uh, somewhere anyway this is uh, at P1 the profit is given by area P1 B C P that's your profit area and that's profit area because it lies above the cost right 
So P1 V C P area that lies at price P1 that since that lies above the cost that uh, uh, naturally would be the profit uh, of the industrialist. But what if the uh, price goes to over to P2? Uh, let me just point it out like this. First price went to P1, then it uh, went to P2. So at P2, the total profit shown by the rectangular area is given by P2 A C P. Now this whole area at price P2, this whole area over here this is producer's profit or the producer's surplus. These two areas, these represent the producer's surplus at different prices that are above the cost. This one represents producer's surplus at P2. So now you can uh, see now that we've drawn the graph, uh, it is easy for you to see uh, as I've distinguished the areas of uh, surplus and the total cost areas. Now this is, uh, remember we talked about the competitive framework uh, in a Pareto optimal economy uh, and I told you that it's very much akin to the perfect competition that we studied. Uh, uh, that we usually study normally come across uh, as one of the models of uh, a functioning economy in the cl economics classes. Now remember that uh, the perfect competition and we went through this in one of the uh, last lectures I remember. Uh, in perfect competition there is no entry barrier and there is no barrier to leaving. Let me just write it down. In perfect competition I'm just writing competition and abbreviating perfect competition there is this is one of the uh, characteristics of perfect competition there is uh, oh, oh. there is no barrier to entry of new firms where did this come from anyway entry of new firms or of the old ones going out This is one of the characteristics of pump perfect competition and the model that we are studying, we are studying under Pareto optimality, uh, the competitive model of the economy. This holds true, this is similar to perfect competition. Now one thing with uh, when there is no barrier on entry and exit, what happens is that uh, you when the producers, other producers, investors who see this happening, that uh, this industrialist is making profit as I said there when the prices go from P, P to P1 then to P2 there's P and Q. Q P and Q represent the equilibrium point where there is no economic profit to say uh, which, which we say producer is even Steven because he's just covering his cost uh, we don't need to go to detail you just need to remember that at this point point E uh, producer is just covering his cost is not making any economic profit. We talked about the difference between eco economic and accounting profit, but he's not making any uh, economic profit. He's just even Steven, what we call uh, at break even point. But above that, at point p uh, price P1 and price P2, uh, as we as I just stated, that he's above the costs that he's incurring for production. So naturally, when he's getting something above his cost of production, that would be his profit. 
Now, when the other producers see that, and when they see especially that uh, this producer has reached a uh, price P2, which is quite higher than the break-even point E, then he is definitely making abnormal profits um, or ad a lot of profits. That would induce them to enter this industry, this particular industry uh, that we I have just graphed. Uh, again, go if you go back to one of the lectures that we uh, uh, studied, uh, that we discussed. One of the things I said that suppose there is an exogenous shocks and the price immediately goes up. What happens in the short run is that there is uh, quite a bit of profit to be made out of it because of because the price rises this is a similar thing happening over here when prices go from p1 uh, p to p1 and then to p2 this is you can consider it just as a shock ke ji kisi wajah se kimte bad gayi hain ab wo jo kimte bad jati hain uski wajah se aap ye dekhenge ke jo total iski uh, paidavar ka kharcha hai uske upar kahi production ho rahi hai us qeemat uske upar chali gayi hai usse zyada chali gayi hai to us पैदावारी जो खर्चे हैं जब उससे कीमत ऊपर चली जाती है तो वो सारा जाहिर है एक मुनाफे की सूरत में होता है जब इस चीज को और फॉर्म्स देखेंगी कि यहाँ पे अच्छा खासा मुनाफा मिल रहा है इस इंडस्ट्री में तो इस मॉडल में परफेक्ट कंपटीशन के वो भी इसी इंडस्ट्री में आ जाएंगी शॉर्ट टू मीडियम रन में दे विल एंटर दिस इंडस्ट्री नाउ वेन दे एंटर द इंडस्ट्री एंड वेन देर इज अ लॉट मोर प्रोडक्शन वट यू वुड सी इन द लॉन्ग रन इज दैट prices would decline prices would decline from p2 to p1 let me see where this has gone there it is so there in the long run there would be a reverse trend you would first see that prices would go down from p2 to p2 to p1 most probably in the medium run then from p1 to p and at this point ultimately your economy in this model would reach again reach this point this break even point where the producer is not making any profit neither is he incurring any loss so this is what happens in a competitive economy or com a competitive competition economy model so producer over here although it things would come back down here but you would realize that there would be a loss too and the loss would be equal to this total area coming back uh, coming down from price p2 to p so let me just state that over here we expect production to be back at pointy which is the break even point so what would be the loss to the total surplus for the producer uh, from the point of view of consumer that would be an advantage why because uh, there is a decrease in prices so naturally for the decrease in price uh there be uh, with a constant income that's what we did in marshallian uh, demand schedule when we said that if we have want to construct a demand schedule based on that marshallian principles that one of the things that we keep constant is income so over here if you are keeping the con income constant and the prices are falling so naturally what would happen is that the consumers buying power would rise and there would be more consumer surplus but the producer surplus uh, the total loss in producer surplus and coming from p2 to point e that would equal this whole area now remember that this is the producer's point of view and the other one is consumer's point of view as prices rise consumers are happy uh, sorry producers are happy because they will getting more per unit but as prices decline consumers would be happy because they can buy more so you can see these two compete competing narratives uh, one from the consumer's point of view one from the producer's point of view and m definitely as 
self-interested individuals as rational individuals what would they want what they would want th their maximum uh, capacity uh, their utility or satisfaction to be maximized and over here we are saying that uh, this criteria revolves around uh, for consumers getting more product for consumption and for producers to getting more profits from production per unit so these are two competing narratives and then uh, in the last lecture remember that diagram that we made about the consumer and producer surplus uh, since these are two competing narratives where would they be happy they would be ultimately have to settle down at the equilibrium point and uh, some in reality sometimes it is the consumer that takes some and on over there on the other side it's the producer that takes some that is why equilibrium is considered a socially optimal uh, condition although in Pakistan it would seem that it's the producer uh, who is taking more of the surplus uh, has been the one who's been taking more of the surplus uh, certainly in most of the industries uh, certainly in industries where there is a lot of hoarding and uh, shortages uh, definitely the industrialist or the commercial classes associated with that they realize a lot of gains uh, but consumers don't but at least when we are talking about the competition model it's even Steven uh, at equilibrium uh, both are happy so um, hopefully you remember uh, the diagram that we drew and uh, you uh, remember that where we pointed out these those areas do you No. yes well I wouldn't know but let me just draw it again uh, just for your convenience so how was it uh, I'll just draw try to draw a simple one uh, try to hurry this thing up a bit because we have to cover the other parts of the lecture too okay how was it let me remember too it was something like this you had the x y axis you had the x axis well this time it's pretty straight you have the demand curve that is going down you have to remember why it was going down and then you have to have the supply curve that is going up again you have to also remember why supply curve is going up this is the equilibrium point easily touched and this is the equilibrium price this is the equilibrium quantity this is big P this is big Q that represents prices and that represents quantities this is the equilibrium price this is the equilibrium quantity and uh, here is the consumers surplus and here it is the producer surplus let us extend this line like this so suppose there were two scenarios in one which the prices go up and then the other one in which prices go down over here the so one is uh, q2 one is uh, oh sorry uh, so yes one is q2 one is q1 so corresponding to q2 would be price p2 and corresponding to q1 would be price p1 that is for our convenience and we said that these areas this one over here that is for the consumer and this one over here that is for the producers and you can see that at E point E these are equally matching areas but suppose that the price uh, increases when the price increases what happens to the quantity demanded quantity demanded comes down from over here to over here with the increase in price this area over here that would be lost to the consumer and uh, that's a loss in the surplus consumer surplus but if the price goes down over here at p1 what would happen over here uh, so p1 for price p1 it's the producer's loss because he is getting less for per product or per unit of the product than he used to so over here in one of the triangles in the down the ones over here down there 
that will represent the loss to the producers so ultimately both the producer this uh, this is at least what the theory goes that ultimately the producer and consumer will realize that look it's no use fighting over this thing so let's do it like this that this let us settle at point e which is equilibrium point where you produce q and i consume at price p so that would be satisfactory to both of us and ultimately they come to this conclusion and they are both happy that is at least what the theory says so again i went through it hopefully by now it would be clear to you now let us move to the other part perfect competition and general equilibrium models are theoretical models but they are not a great guide to the practical world the fact is that some of the assumptions of this model run contrary to reality acha ye ab hum models ki baat kar rahe hain ye modeling jo hoti hai ye this is not perfect isme uh, you cannot incorporate everything uh, pata chalta hai ki isme koi na koi khami reh jati hai ab ye perfect competition ke models jo hain ya perfectly competitive framework jo hai pareto optimality wala ye bhi is tarah ki ek wishful qism ki thinking lagti hai perfect competition kahi jo pure perfect competition hai wo kahi exist nahi karta مختلف قسم کے ہوتے ہیں مناپولائز مارکیٹس ہوتی ہیں اولیگوپولائز مارکیٹس ہوتی ہیں مارکیٹس ہوتی ہیں جس میں اے سیمیٹریز ہیں جس میں مس انفارمیشن ہے جو جو کہ یہ چیزیں جو ہوتی ہیں یہ ماڈلس کو جو ہے اس کے درمیان ان کے درمیان ایک انسرٹنٹی آ جاتی ہے ان کی وجہ سے تو ماڈلس کی جو پروڈکشن ہوتی ہے وہ ساری الٹ ہو جاتی ہیں اگر الٹ نہ بھی ہو تو وہ چینج ہو جاتی ہیں اب جس طرح ہم نے اس میں ایک ایزمپشن کی تھی کہ جی لانگ رن میں ایسا ہوگا کہ قیمتیں کم ہو جائیں گی اور کم ہی ہوتی جائیں گی اور پھر آخر میں آ کے اس جگہ پہ ہو جائیں گی جہاں پہ وہ جو پروڈیوسر بے چارہ ہے وہ جب بیٹھا ہوگا وہ ایک نہ اس کو کوئی فائدہ ہو رہا ہے نہ اس کو نقصان ہو رہا ہے لیکن وہ کرتا ہے یار ہے کاروبار حقیقت میں ایسا ہوتا نہیں ہے آپ نے کتنے ایسے پروڈیوسر دیکھے ہوں گے کتنے ایسے انڈسٹریلس دیکھے ہوں گے کہ جن کو کوئی لانگ رن میں جن کو پتا ہو کہ ہمیں نقصان ہی ہونا ہے یا پھر ہم نے کچھ کمانا نہیں ہے اور وہ جا کے انڈسٹری لگاتے ہیں ڈزنٹ نیسرلی ہیپن ان دا ریئل ورلڈ میں نے کوئی ایسی ایگزامپل آج تک نہیں دیکھی شاید کوئی ہو بھی لیکن ایٹ لیسٹ آئی ہیونٹ کم اکراس دم ناؤ اوور ٹو ورڈس ون دا سم آف دا ڈیفیشینسیز آف دیز ماڈلس ٹیک دا کیٹرس پیرابس نوشن take the catrus uh, catrus paribus notion one that we discussed while discussing the construction of marshallian demand schedules humne ek uh, assumption li thi catrus paribus assumption uh, catrus paribus ka matlab hai keeping everything constant uh, keeping everything else constant and just considering uh, one thing at a time in the real world economies evolve and circumstances can change quickly and the kind of competition competitive model whose basic aim is a pareto optimal allocation information disseminates very quickly uh, yes there are information asymmetries aisa bhi hota hai ki information chupai bhi jati hai jaisa maine aapko kai dafa misal di ki kis tarah information ko ya numbers ko jo hai doctor bhi kiya jata hai unse khela jata hai just to make them look good lekin aisa bhi hota hai both instances mein that uh, information practically good information uh, for investors for savers for other section of the society jinka koi aim hota hai khas unke paas wo information bahut jaldi pahunch jati hai uh, it reaches them uh, immediately misal ke taur pe misal ke taur pe aap dekhega ki yahan pe jo sellers hain khas taur pe petroleum products ke kisi bhi petrol pump pe chale jaye unke paas pehle se information hoti hai کہ پیٹرول کی قیمتوں کو ہونا کیا ہے اگر پیٹرول کی قیمتیں بڑھ بڑھیں گی جو کہ نارملی پاکستان میں ہوتا ہے کم ہوتی نہیں ہے بس اوپر ہی جاتی جاتی ہیں تو اس میں آپ دیکھیں گے کہ کسی بھی پیٹرول پمپ پہ آپ جائیں گے ایک دن پہلے ہی ان کو پتہ ہوتا ہے کہ قیمتوں کے ساتھ کچھ ہونے والا ہے بڑھنے والی ہے تو پیٹرول شارٹ کر دیتے ہیں وہ اتنا بیچتے نہیں ہے کیونکہ ان کو نقصان ہوتا ہے اب جو نئی قیمت بارہ بجے کے بعد رات بارہ بجے کے بعد آئے گی تو اس میں ان کو فائدہ ہوگا کیونکہ وہ زیادہ ہے وہ اس لیے اس کو زیادہ کر دیں گے جسٹ این ایگزامپل یہ تقریباً ہر جگہ ہوگا پھر آپ کو ایون جو سبزیاں بیچ رہا ہوگا اسے بھی پتا ہوگا کہ اس سبزیوں کے ساتھ اگلے دن کیا ہونے والا ہے قیمت بڑھنے والی ہے اندازہ ہوتا ہے اس کو وہ ایک گیس لگاتا ہے گیسٹ میٹ وہ تو یہ انفارمیشن کافی کوکلی ڈسمنیٹ ہوتی ہے اٹ گوز اراؤنڈ ویری کوکلی سنس اٹ گوز اراؤنڈ ویری کوکلی اینڈ پیپل لرن پریٹی کوکلی 
they change the circumstances change according to it they change their behavior they change the mode of production or they change the mode of selling maine aapko kaha ke ab bataya ke wo petrol kam bechna shuru kar de that's basically hoarding unko pata hai ke agle din qeemat badhne wali hai aur abhi ki kam qeemat pe bechne mein nuksan hi hai kyunki kal humne zyada qeemat pe bechenge usme zyada munafa hai so they change their behavior so therefore these uh, models that the perfect competition model wahi pe reh jata hai uh, thus ho jata hai uh, and uh, in this kind of uh, in the kind of the competitive model whose basic aim is a pareto optimal allocation information disseminates very quickly jaisa ki abhi maine aapko bataya in lieu of the change in information economic agents like investors change their preferences quickly too uh, while large scale industries or already long term investment will find changing preferences difficult same is not true of small scale investments especially those that are, that are liquid or small can स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्रियल कमर्शियल वेंचर अच्छा आप देखिए ये चीज नोटिस कीजिएगा कि ये जो वेंचर्स होते हैं ना जी इस तरह के ये इंडस्ट्री वगैरह के जिसकी हम बात कर रहे हैं इसमें कुछ होते हैं इंडस्ट्री सिर्फ ये नहीं होती कि एक बड़ी सी फैक्ट्री लगा ली नहीं एक ऐसा नोशन नहीं है जिसमें स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्री भी होती है घरों में जो प्रोडक्शन हो रही होती है दीज आर स्मॉल स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्री घरेलू लेवल पर जो प्रोडक्शन होती है और फिर इसमें लिक्विड इन्वेस्टमेंट यानी जिसमें वो लिक्विड इन्वेस्टमेंट इज द वन दैट कैन इमीडिएटली बी कन्वर्टेड इनटू कैश बहुत सी ऐसी इन्वेस्टमेंट भी होती है जिसमें फॉरन जो है माल बेच सकते हैं आप अगर आपने कारोबार नहीं करना है एंड यू कैन कन्वर्ट इट इनटू कैश वो पैसे में आप कन्वर्ट कर सकते हैं तो ये लॉन्ग टर्म जो इन्वेस्टमेंट होगी जो ऑलरेडी बड़ी बड़ी इंडस्ट्रीज होगी जाहिर है उनके लिए अगर इन्फॉर्मेशन नहीं आ भी गई एकदम प्रोडक्शन चेंज करना प्रोडक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी चेंज करना ह्यूमन रिसोर्स चेंज करना दैट इज इम्पॉसिबल अनलेस इट्स द लॉन्ग रन लेकिन वो इस तरह की बड़ी इंडस्ट्री दैट्स ओनली अ वेरी स्मॉल पार्ट ऑफ द इकोनॉमी और टोटल इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन और टोटल प्रोडक्शन उसमें फिर मीडियम साइज होती है फिर स्मॉल स्केल लेवल जो है वो ज्यादा डोमिनेट करते हैं यहाँ पे एटलीस्ट तो वो जो है वो फॉरन अपनी जो नई इन्फॉर्मेशन आती है उसके मुताबिक वो अपनी प्रेफरेंसेज प्रोडक्शन इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन वो सारे चेंज कर लेते हैं सो so, uh, जैसा कि मैंने कहा कि फिर वो जो प्रोडिक्शन होती हैं परफेक्ट कंपटीशन वगैरह की वो उधर की उधर ही रह जाती हैं या इस तरह का वो प्रेटो ऑप्टोमेलिटी की तो दीज वर द शॉर्ट कमिंग्स वन ऑफ फ्यू ऑफ द शॉर्ट कमिंग्स द अदर मेजर प्रॉब्लम अराइजेज विद द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन टू चार्ट आउट एन ऑप्टोमल फ्रेमवर्क वी नीड परफेक्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज पार्टिसिपेंट्स देर मोटिव देर डिसीजन as stated in the previous lecture that is quite simply impossible uh, even the us economy estimates are supposed to be missing at least 5% of the economic activity dekhiye ab yahan pe ek to wo hai ke information logo ke paas bahut jaldi pahunch gayi hai lekin abhi bhi jo maine aapko misale di wo sirf sellers ke paas thi in jo jo buyer hota hai meri tarah aap tarah ka koi aapki tarah ka koi buyer hai i'm just supposing that all of you like me are buyers consumers हमें तो नहीं पता होता कि तेल की कीमत को इतना अच्छा हमारे पास गेस्टिमेट नहीं होता कि क्या होने वाला है तो हम तो चले जाते हैं तेल भरने लेकिन जिसने तेल बेचना होता है उसके पास ये एस्टिमेट होता है तो अब कुछ केसेस में देखें कि इन्फॉर्मेशन बहुत जल्दी जा रही है लोगों को पहुंच रही है लेकिन बहुत से केसेज ऐसे होते हैं जिसमें इन्फॉर्मेशन डिसमिनेशन जो होती है वो बहुत देर से पहुंचती है पता ही नहीं चलता ये दिस इज दिस इज बिग रियली अ बिग प्रॉब्लम हेयर इन द पब्लिक सेक्टर दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन इज नॉट गिवन इट्स नॉट ट्रांसपेरेंट सो इसकी वजह से जो है अगेन एक प्रॉब्लम आ जाता है कि वो परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन का मॉडल है कि जी इन्फॉर्मेशन इज कम्प्लीटली फ्रीली अवेलेबल एंड इट ट्रेवल्स इमीडिएटली और पहुंच जाती है उसके मुताबिक अचानक सर्कमस्टांसिस चेंज हो जाती है टू सम एक्सटेंट दैट इज ट्रू ओनली इफ यू कंसिडर इट ऑन अ स्मॉल स्केल जो कि मैंने एग्जाम्पल्स दी बट ऑन अ लार्ज स्केल ऑन द कंज्यूमर स्केल दैट इज अ बिट हार्ड टू डाइजेस्ट फिर मैंने एग्जाम्पल दी कि इकोनॉमीज में यह अंदाजा लगाना कि तमाम जो इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी हो रही है तमाम सारी जो इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी हो रही है वो कवर किस तरह करें वो उसका अंदाजा किस तरह लगाएंगे कि जी वो प्रिसाइज एस्टिमेट हो कि ये हो रहा है जिसके मुताबिक फिर पॉलिसीज बनाई जाती है दैट इज टिल नाउ दैट इज प्रूव टू बी ऑलमोस्ट इम्पॉसिबल आई गेव यू द एग्जाम्पल ओवर हेयर ऑफ द यूनाइट स्टेट इकोनॉमी द यूएस इकोनॉमी it is the largest economy in the world 14 trillion dollars its gdp economies are uh, the size of economies measured in the gross domestic by gross domestic product we'll definitely hear uh, of gdp and uh, like uh, uh, factors 
और लाइक मेजर्स इन वन ऑफ द फ्यूचर लेक्चर्स लेकिन फॉर द मोमेंट जस्ट रिमेंबर दैट द साइज ऑफ द इकोनॉमी इज मेजर्ड इन द रियल जीडीपी तो यूएस इकोनॉमी जो भी जो है जो कि दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी इकोनॉमी है उसमें साइज ऑफ द जीडीपी जो है उसकी जो एस्टिमेट्स है पता चलता है जो एक अंदाजा लगाया गया है जो रिसर्च की गया है कि पांच फीसद उसमें भी इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी मिसिंग है जिसको अभी तक कवर नहीं किया गया जिसको फॉर्मल इनफॉर्मल इकोनॉमी कहते हैं जो कि डॉक्यूमेंटेशन उसकी कोई नहीं हुई पाकिस्तान में इसका साइज जो है मैं एक रिसर्च पेपर पढ़ रहा था आई डोंट रिमेंबर द ऑथर राइट नाउ बट इट वॉज अ वंडरफुल रिसर्च पेपर एंड ही हैड डन अ मेटिकुलस रिसर्च उसने ये अंदाज लगाया था कि पाकिस्तान में जो अनडॉक्यूमेंटेड इकोनॉमी है जो कि जिसका कोई पता नहीं है जो रिकॉर्ड नहीं हो रही है सरकार के उसमें खातों में और जिसकी वजह से इतना टैक्स भी उनको नहीं देना पड़ता क्योंकि वो रिकॉर्ड ही नहीं हो रही वो तकरीबन 25 फीसद ऑफ जी डी पी है अराउंड ट्वेंटी फाइव टू थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ जी डी पी दिस इज ह्यूज एंड नो वंडरिंग नो वंडर वी आर सफरिंग के पच्चीस से तीस फीसद इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटी वो कैप्चर ही नहीं हो रही जिसकी वजह से टैक्स भी नहीं मिलता और जिसकी वजह से कोई अंदाजे भी गलत लग जाते हैं तो वी नीड टू करेक्ट दैट दिस इज काइंड ऑफ एन इन्फॉर्मेशन ए सीमेट्री की आपको पता ही नहीं है कि मुल्क में कितनी इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी हो रही है और फिर अगर पच्चीस तीस फीसद जो है वो हमें ना पता हो कि क्या हो रहा है तो दैट इज रियली सैड उसकी वजह से बहुत से अंदाजे जो है बहुत अच्छे अंदाजे भी वो भी गलत हो जाते हैं अक्सर लेट्स नाउ मूव ऑन टूवर्ड्स द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी ये मैंने लास्ट लेक्चर में भी बात की थी कि वील बी लुकिंग एट दिस कॉन्सेप्ट द इलास्टिसिटी कॉन्सेप्ट कि ये होता क्या है और इसकी अहमियत क्या है दिस इज अ प्रीडी इंपॉर्टेंट वन स्पेशली वेन यू आर मेकिंग डिसीजन रिलेटेड टू टैक्सिंग और इम्पोजिंग अ टैक्स वो इज दैट इम्पोर्टेंट वील जस्ट लुक एट इट before we discuss it uh, consider the question like what's the effect of increase in oil price on the price of wheat ye main ab elasticity define karne ki koshish kar raha hu aap log ke what it is simply or what effect does imposing a tax on air time have on social media interaction in both of these cases the goods in question are unrelated oil and wheat are different products now dekhiye isme ek taraf tel hai ek taraf gandam hai fir yahan pe ek taraf tax impose karne ki koshish kar rahe hain ki jo call time hai टेलीफोन पे बात कर रहे होते हैं उस पर टैक्स इम्पोज कर दिया उसका फिर सोशल इंट्रैक्शन से या माशरती इंट्रैक्शन से उसका क्या ताल्लुक है इसका ऐसा तो लगेगा कि कोई ताल्लुक ही नहीं है ये दो तो चीज़ें आपस में अनरिलेटेड है अब तेल का और गंदम का तो कोई ताल्लुक ही नहीं है तेल हम नहीं पीते तो नहीं है गंदम हम खाते हैं इनके दरमियान क्या रहना है लेकिन अब पाकिस्तान अगेन मुल्क की एग्जाम्पल कहते हैं कि चैरिटी बिगिन एट होम तो यहाँ पे अगर आप मिसाल लें पाकिस्तान की यहाँ पे जब तेल की कीमत बढ़ती है तो बाकी कीमतों को क्या होता है सब बढ़ जाती हैं अगर उसका कोई रिलेशन हो ना हो तो ये देखें एक कम्प्लीटली डिफरेंट हुआ है कि यहाँ पे तेल की कीमत बढ़ गई तो दाल और गंदम की कीमत भी बढ़ गई आपस में इनका कोई रिलेशन नहीं नजर आता एक डिफरेंट प्रोडक्ट है डिफरेंट नेचर की प्रोडक्ट है दूसरी डिफरेंट नेचर की प्रोडक्ट है लेकिन इनका असर होता है देर इज अ कॉजल इफेक्ट सो so, जो आर्म सप्लाई और डिमांड एनालिसिस है वो आपको इस चीज़ का अंदाजा नहीं देता कि किस किस्म का इफेक्ट हो रहा है और कितनी हद तक हो रहा है क्या परसेंटेज है उसकी वो आपको सिंपली ये बताता है कि हाँ जी कीमत अगर इंक्रीज होगी तो एक्सपेक्ट द क्वांटिटी कंज्यूम टू बी डिक्रीज या फिर अगर कीमत इंक्रीज होगी तो वी एक्सपेक्ट द सप्लाई टू इंक्रीज लेकिन ये नहीं बताता कि बाई वट परसेंटेज एंड हाउ और वो एक ही चीज पे कंसंट्रेट करता है गुड एक्स गुड वाई वो दो तीन चीजों पे कंसंट्रेट अनरिलेटेड गुड्स में नहीं रिलेटेड गुड्स पे कंसंट्रेट करता है यहाँ पे बात आ रही है अनरिलेटेड गुड्स की अब मैंने बात की कि अगर तेल की कीमत बढ़ गई उसका गंदम की कीमत पे क्या असर पड़ेगा या जो आम जो दूध मिलता है कुल्ला दूध हो गया या पैक दूध हो गया उसकी कीमत पर क्या असर पड़ता है आल दो अनरिलेटेड गुड्स लेकिन इस तरह के जब सवाल आते हैं तो उनकी मेजरमेंट के लिए इलास्टिसिटी इस्तेमाल की जाती है इलास्टिसिटी का कॉन्सेप्ट सो दैट इलास्टिसिटी दैट मेजर्स द वेरिएशन इन डिमांड और सप्लाई ऑफ अनरिलेटेड प्रोडक्ट्स। सो सपोज वन प्रोडक्ट्स प्राइस इंक्रीजेस सो वी वांट टू सी वी वांट टू गेज व्हाट्स द इफेक्ट ऑन द कंजम्पन ऑफ अदर प्रोडक्ट्स ड्यू टू दिस प्राइस इंक्रीज 
uh, which are which is different though those are the products which are different in nature so for that we will be using elasticity and the other advantage with elasticity is that you get a number you get a certain percentage of number that this percentage is so percentage ये इतनी वेरिएशन हो रही है इसमें जो हमें अंदाजा हो रहा है और इसकी हैं काफी मिसालें हैं there are quite a lot of examples एक मैं आपको मिसाल देता हूँ स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान की उनकी 2012 की फिजिकल इयरली रिपोर्ट you can go through it स्टेट बैंक ऑफ पाकिस्तान की इयरली रिपोर्ट्स बड़ी अच्छी रिपोर्ट्स होती हैं पढ़ने के काबिल होती उसमें उन्होंने इलास मेरे ख्याल में 2012-13 की जो रिपोर्ट थी जो मैंने पढ़ी थी उसमें कुछ ये जो चीजें हैं इलास्टिसिटीज प्रोडक्ट्स उनकी इलास्टिसिटीज को उनके रिसर्चर्स ने एस्टिमेट किया हुआ था वो इलास्टिसिटी नंबर्स थे वर इट वाज अ प्रीडी इंटरेस्टिंग रिपोर्ट सो कहने का मकसद य सिर्फ एक हाइपोथेटिकल नहीं है कि कोई नंबर इस तरह हम निकालेंगे लोग इस तरह की कैलकुलेशंस करते हैं दे कम अप विद दिस काइंड ऑफ कैलकुलेशंस नाउ सिंपल डिमांड एंड सप्लाई एनालिसिस इज लिमिटेड टू एनालिसिस ऑफ वन प्रोडक्ट द कंपैरिजन अक्रॉस गुड्स ऑफ डिफरेंट नेचर इज डन थ्रू इलास्टिसिटी वी हैव गोन थ्रू दिस इट गिव्स अस अ नंबर यूजुअली अ परसेंटेज इट इज अ परसेंटेज अनलाइक द डिमांड एंड सप्लाई एनालिसिस दैट टेंड्स टू शो अस द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ इफेक्ट ऑफ चेंज इन वन गुड ऑन अनदर सप्लाई एंड डिमांड कुड आइदर बी इलास्टिक और इनलास्टिक अब ये चीज नोटिस कीजिएगा यहां से थोड़ा सा ये दिस इज गेटिंग टेक्निकल I'll uh, try to understand this. I've written it in simple words. I'll try to explain it in as simple as possible, like I always do. I am uh, guessing that I'm just assuming that nobody has a background in this thing. And even if you have, let it be a refresher course, just like it was for me. Suppose that 10% change in price induces a 5% change in quantity demanded. That implies that the demand curve is inelastic. Now, here we see that. कीमत जो है वो 10 फीसद बढ़ गई है किसी एक प्रोडक्ट की लेकिन जो क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड है उसमें चेंज सिर्फ फर्क सिर्फ पांच फीसद आया यानी वो सिर्फ पांच फीसद उसकी कंसेप्शन कम हुई है या उससे भी कम कम हुई है इस किस्म के केसेस में जो कहते हैं कि जो क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड या डिमांड कर वे वो इन डिमांड कर इसलिए इन इलास्टिक है कि इतनी ज्यादा कीमत बढ़ गई है लेकिन उसका कोई खातिर खास असर नहीं पड़ा वो तो या फिर उतना ही असर नहीं पड़ा क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड या कंजम्पशन पे दैट वुड बी एन इन इलास्टिक कर्व इन कंट्रास्ट इफ द परसेंटेज चेंज इन क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड इज मोर देन द चेंज इन प्राइस देन द डिमांड कर्व इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी इलास्टिक अगर यहां पे 10% कीमत बढ़ रही है और उसके मुकाबले लेकिन ऐसा होता है कि जैसे ही 10% कीमत बढ़ती है तो जो कंजम्पशन होती है एक किसी भी प्रोडक्ट की वो ये कह लें कि 20 फीसद कम हो जाती है तो इस केस में जो डिमांड कर्व है या डिमांड का जो शेड्यूल है उसको कहते हैं कि इट इज एन इलास्टिक डिमांड शेड्यूल और डिमांड कर्व सो दिस इज इन इलास्टिक एंड इलास्टिक लेकिन सपोज इसमें मैंने लिखा नहीं है लेकिन जस्ट फॉर इन्फॉर्मेशन सपोज के अगर दस कीमत बढ़ती है और उसी के साथ दस जो है वो कंजम्पशन डिक्रीज हो जाती है तो फिर क्या होगा मतलब बिल्कुल इक्वली मैचिंग है दैट वुड बी अ यूनिट इलास्टिक कर्व आई हैव रिटर्न इट ओवर हियर बट आई एम जस्ट लेटिंग यू नो सो दैट यू मे रिमेंबर यूनिट इलास्टिक का मतलब है कि हर जितनी परसेंटेज से कीमत बढ़ रही है या कम हो रही है उसी लिहाज से जो कंजम्पशन किसी प्रोडक्ट की है उसी नंबर से जितनी कीमत कम हुई या बढ़ी है परसेंटेज वाइज उस वो ही परसेंटेज वाइज जो है वो कंजम्पशन कम या ज्यादा होगी डिपेंडिंग ऑन प्राइस इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज that would be unit elastic this concept of elasticity as applied to supply works in the same way yes demand ki main baat kar raha tha ki demand curve lekin supply curve mein bhi jo hoga wo isi tarah ki cheez hogi ke agar keemat 10% badhti hai aur uske muqable mein producer jo hai supply 20% increase kar dete hain yani keemat se zyada supply mein increase supply mein fark aaya to wo elastic supply curve hogi agar कीमत 10 फीसद बढ़ गई है, लेकिन सप्लाई जो है वो सिर्फ 5 फीसद बढ़ती है, तो ये वो इन इलास्टिक सप्लाई कर बोगी कि वो रिस्पॉन्ड ही नहीं कर रही कीमतों को इतनी ज़्यादा। एंड अदर वे अराउंड फॉर प्राइस फॉर प्राइस डिक्रीज़ेस तो, सो होपफुली दिस इज़ सिंपल इनफ़, बट इट लुक्स सिंपल इनफ़ tend to come in pretty handy.
So anyway, let's go to the next slide. Let's see what it is. Application of elasticity. Is ki kya application ho sakti hai elasticity? Humne ye kaha tha ki ji taxation ki maine baat ki thi aur taxation ki maine misal bhi pichle lectures mein di thi. If you tax a certain product and what happens to its price, वो हमने एक optimal उसमें बात की थी surplus के हवाले से। So application ये elasticity की एक application and this is a very important application application as a public policy analyst, as a public policy designer, one of the most important things or one of the most important aspects of public policy that you're going to come up against is taxation. Obviously, the governments run on taxing um, because they earn revenue through taxes. But the important part over here is not just the government's right to tax. Government has the right to tax. Uh, federal government, the provincial government, the local level government, yes, they have the right to tax. But the important question is to whom to tax and which product to tax. Uh, that depends upon the priorities of uh, decision makers. So. The policy of taxation has to consider some important questions in the case of imposing taxes. Uh, equity, distribution and efficiency, that's also a big part of these considerations. For example, whether a goods demand is elastic or inelastic and who will bear the burden of tax? Bearing the burden of tax. Kis pe sara boj padega tax hoga? Usko gaite economic incidence. Ye yaad Bearing the ultimate burden of tax is different than on whom the tax is levied, uh, statutory incidents. Ab in dono cheezo mein bhi aap zaroor differentiate karne ki koshish kijiyega ki ye inka matlab kya hai aur ye kya ho raha hai darmiyan mein. Ab suppose kisi producer pe tax lagu kar diya humne. Lekin demand curve jo hai, wo inelastic hai. Yani ki kiemat agar bad bhi jaye to demand pe koi itna fark nahi aayega. So, at this, in this case, what the producer would do, who he knows that the demand curve is inelastic, कि लोग जो हैं वो चीज़ जो इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं अगर कीमत बढ़ भी गई उससे बहुत ज़्यादा इधर उधर नहीं हो सकते, तो क्या करेंगे वो? वो सारा burden of tax अगर उनपे लगता भी है, जो उनकी कीमत, जो उनकी मुनाफे में फर्क आएगा, वो सारा transfer कर देंगे consumer को, वो उनसे ज़्यादा पैसे वस� حکومت ان سے تو وصول کر رہی ہے پروڈیسر سے لیکن اصل میں وصول کہاں سے ہو رہا ہے وہ کنزیومر سے ہو رہا ہے جس کو زیادہ قیمت اسی پروڈک کی پی کرنی پڑتی ہے پروڈیسر کا منافع ادھر کا ادھر گیا سو دیٹ اس کیس میں جو سٹیٹیوٹری انسیڈنس ہے مطلب بائی لاو یو ٹیکس امپوس کیا گیا ہے سٹیٹیوٹری مینز لاو بائی لاو تو یہاں پہ دیکھیں جو حکومت نے سپوز ایک on whom the statutory incidence of tax is uh, uh, going to come up, uh, is going to uh, affect uh, the statutory, uh, he is going to be affected by the statutory incidence. But the economic incidence of tax, that is the important question for a public analyzer. That in the end, who has to do the bojh? We have said that we have to put it on the tax. But in the end, who has to do the bojh? وہ اس کو جب یہ چیز کنسیڈر کہی جاتی ہے اور یہ سب سے امپورٹنٹ کنسیڈریشن ہوتی ہے اکنومک پالیسی کی ہونی چاہیے اکثر ایسا بھی ہوتا ہے کہ کوئی پرواہ نہیں کرتا لیکن ہونی چاہیے تو جس پہ آخر میں سارا بوجھ پڑے گا ٹیکسیشن کا یہ چیز جو ہے اکنومک انسیڈنس کہلائے گی کہ کس پہ بوجھ پڑ رہا ٹیکسیشن کا نورملی جیسے کہ آپ نے دیکھا یہاں پہ لوگوں پہ ہی پڑتا ہے میڈل کلاس اور تو اکنومک انسیڈنس جو ہوتا ہے وہ ان کو زیادہ تبدیر کرنا پڑتا ہے سو یو نیٹ ٹو ڈیفرنشیٹ بیٹوین اکنومک انسیڈنس اور سٹیٹیوٹری انسیڈنس لیٹس ڈو اگرافک انیلسز آئی ڈون تنک وی بی ڈوئنگ ایٹ ان دیس کلاس بیکاز لیٹس فور دو مومنٹ ویو ڈن سم گرافک انیلسز لیٹس ڈو ایٹ ان ادھر کلاس فور دو مومنٹ آئیل جس ٹک this kind of this stuff and we will move over to the next lecture and in the next lecture we'll do this graphic analysis of uh, uh, try and try to come up with some answers on uh, what uh, what this looks like uh, in at least in graphs how do we analyze this thing but here it is important that you 
differentiate between as a public remember that as a public policy analyzer it is important that you guess the economic incidence of tax kis pe bojh padega as a tax policy advisor as a person who is designing a tax policy ye cheeze aapko yaad rakhne ki zarurat hai acha ab iski main kya aapko abhi maine misal di ke ho sakta hai ki jo producer hai us pe टैक्स लगा दिया जाए लेकिन वो फिर उसका वो फर्क ना पड़े क्या मिसाल हो सकती है इसकी आ, मिसाल इसकी सिंपल ये हो सकती है सादा सी मिसाल एक गर्मी में गर्मियों में जो वाटर की सप्लाई होती है पानी की सप्लाई होती है आ, गर्मियों में जब वो देखें अब ये भी यहाँ पे एक हसन इतफाक देखें कि गर्मियों में पानी एक अब एक ज़रूरत है आ, वो इस्तेमाल करना ही करना है चाहे कोई भी मौसम हो जैसे कहते हैं पानी के बगैर पानी जिंदगी है पानी के बगैर कोई जिंदगी नहीं है तो पानी इस्तेमाल करना ही है रोज़मर्रा के कामों के लिए कपड़े वगैरह धोने के लिए हांडी वगैरह पकाने के लिए कुकिंग के लिए पीने के लिए नहाने धोने के लिए तो जो पानी की डिमांड है ना जी वो अगर मैं बात करूं डिमांड कर्व के हवाले से तो दैट इज प्रिटी इन इलास्टिक कि पानी इस्तेमाल करना ही करना है ठीक है उसमें कमी बेशी आ जाती है लेकिन पानी इस्तेमाल करना ही है गर्मियों में वो ख़ास तौर पर हाईली इन इलास्टिक इसलिए हो जाती है कि गर्मियों में पानी ज़्यादा इस्तेमाल होता है और गर्मियों में यहाँ पर अक्सर पानी की कमी हो जाती है बड़े शहरों में चले जाएँ ख़ास तौर पर कराची इस्लामाबाद रावल पिंडी वगैरह यहाँ पे फिर कभी कभार ऐसा भी होता है कि टैंकर भी नहीं मिलता आप पैसे देने को भी तैयार होते हैं टैंकर भी नहीं मिलता तो अगर सपोज गवर्नमेंट जो प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं प्राइवेट पानी जो बेचते हैं बड़े बड़े टैंकरों में लाते हैं ये जिनके पास वो अक्सर ट्रैक्टर्स वगैरह होते हैं या बड़े टैंकर्स होते हैं पानी सप्लाई करने वाले अगर उन पर टैक्स लगा भी दे तो आपका क्या ख्याल है कि प्रोड्यूसर पर क्या फ़र्क पड़ेगा प्रोड्यूसर पर कोई ज़्यादा फ़र्क नहीं पड़ने लगा इसलिए क्योंकि उसने वही कीमत जो उस पर इम्पोज की गई है और जो अब उसको जो महंगा पड़ रहा है पानी सप्लाई करना वो उसी हिसाब से वो कीमत जो है वो लोगों से वसूल करेगा क्योंकि उसको पता है कि अगर मैं 1500 सौ की बजाय 2000 हज़ार का भी टैंकर भेजूँ तो लोग मजबूर हैं जिसके घर में पानी नहीं है उसने खरीदना ही खरीदना है चाहे वो पंद्रह का हो चाहे दो का सो दिस इज़ वन एग्ज़ाम्पल दिस इज़ इन फैक्ट द सिंपल एग्ज़ाम्पल कि अगर जब एक एक कर्व जो होती है इन इलास्टिक होती है तो उसमें फिर अगर टैक्स किसी पे अब स्टेट्यूटरी इंसिडेंस किस पे था जो पाली सप्लाई करने वाले हैं स्टेट्यूटरी इंसिडेंस टैक्स का वो उन पे लागू होता है लेकिन इकोनॉमिक इंसिडेंस किस पे लागू हो रहा है वो ही जो पानी कंज्यूम कर रहे हैं वो पानी प्रोड्यूसर्स पे पानी सप्लायर्स पे नहीं हो रहा सो होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू ना एंड देन डेफिनेटली इन शाह इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वील गो थ्रू द सिंपल एनालिसिस of how, how we go about uh, graphically go about this stuff uh, elasticity and uh, tax matters of taxation but before uh, we uh, go on and uh, leave we, uh, and say i say goodbye to you for this lecture uh, just a brief summary we went through the producer surplus consumer surplus thing again uh, the producer surplus and then i demonstrated in detail why which areas would represent surplus and why in the long run then we discuss that we expect in the perfectly competitive model at least that we expect that uh, production over on the long run that will happen at the equilibrium point where marginal cost curve cuts the average cost curve that curve what you need to remember that is the break even point where there are no economic profits in the long run but the producer is even steven he might not be making any profit or much of a profit but he is producing uh, something Uh, anyway and then afterwards we discussed in brief how this thing uh, about perfect competition that might not be viable that might not be practical uh, in the real world because there are certain uh, prerequisites that need to work perfectly which they don't unfortunately then we went through the concept of elasticity and uh, i said that uh, i'd explain to you what it is and what it means then the economic incidence of tax and the statutory incidence of tax So, inshallah, Tala, in the next lecture, we'll go through the graphical analysis of this thing. Uh, till then, goodbye, Allah Hafiz, and have a nice one.